Hello and welcome to the Productivity Enhancing Tools video tutorial. What are Productivity Enhancing Tools? They are tools designed to reduce commissioning time and provide easy to build user interfaces with the following individual software applications. DC Images, DC GFX Applications, and GFX Applications. While independently powerful and intuitive, the sheer power and measurable efficiencies come from when these tools are used together. The DC images provide a complete library of over 700 HVAC equipment and application images. The DC GFX applications are pre-built ECNet AX graphic pages for display and controller configuration. The GFX applications are a complete library of pre-engineered applications embedded within ECGFX program. This Productivity Enhancing Tools video tutorial will show you first how to install the Productivity Enhancing Tools, followed by installing the DC Images files on the ECBOS, how to work with the DC Images palette, install the DC GFX Applications palette, and add pre-engineered controllers to an ECNet AX station. For the purpose of this tutorial, we assume that you are connected to an ECBOS AX platform and to a LawnWorks or BACnet station. Let's begin by installing the latest version of the Distech Control's Productivity Enhancing Tools using Smart Installer. If Smart Installer is already installed on your PC, simply double-click the Smart Installer icon on your desktop, or you can access it through the Start menu in the Distech Controls folder. The Smart Installer welcome page is displayed. Click Next to begin. Select the Productivity Enhancing Tools that you wish to install, and then click Next. The Productivity Enhancing Tools Setup Wizard is displayed as well. Click Next to continue. The three Productivity Enhancing Tool components that come with the Productivity Enhancing Tools are selected by default. Simply click Next to continue. Select the latest version of the ECNet AX. Once the setup is complete, click Finish. Now to complete the installation, you must restart your computer. Once you've installed the latest version of the Distech Control's Productivity Enhancing Tools, you may begin by installing the DC Images files on the ECBOS through ECNet AX. In the platform, double-click on Software Manager. Select DC Images from the list provided. Then click Install and Commit to confirm the installation. Once the DC Images are installed, open up the DC Images palette. Click on Open Palette and select DC Images. Then expand the Station folder. If you're not connected to a station, go ahead and do so. Then select the image service in the DC Images palette and you will drag and drop it into the services folder of your station. If you expand the services folder, you will notice the image service is now installed. The image service should already be licensed and enabled by default. Enabled is set to true and licensed is set to true. Now that we've installed the DC Images files on the ECBOS, we will move on to how to use the DC Image Palette. The DC Images module provides the equipment and the components needed to consistently and easily assemble high-end HVAC system graphics. You can create systems such as variable air handling units, fan coil units, and much more using the complete library of over 700 HVAC equipment and application images provided with the DC Images palette. Let's begin by opening a graphic view in order to create a simple graphic system. Locate your device, right-click, and select Views, New View. In the New PX View window, you can enter a name for your new graphic. I will call mine System 1. I will keep the current settings and simply click OK. Now to edit my new graphic. 
I will select Views and then select Edit System 1, which is the name of the new graphics page that I just created. This will place the graphics page in an edit mode. In this example, I will add a duck to a graphic page and then add a few components to it later on. First, make sure that your DC Images palette is selected. This is where you'll select the objects you wish to add to your graphic. In my case, I will add a horizontal duct. I will locate the duct and then drag and drop it onto the graphics page. If for some reason the graphic comes out unclear, simply click the toggle edit mode icon at the top to refresh the image. I will now add a few more straight ducts and align them together to obtain a wider duct. You can move these graphic images around until you've obtained your desired result. These images that I've just added are referred to as graphic labels. They are inanimate graphical widgets such as a duct or a plenum that are not linked to any value. Now to further enhance my graphic, I can also add some extra components to it, such as a vertical heating coil. Unlike the ducts that I just added, the coil will be an animated graphic, and it depends on a certain value. I will start by adding a numeric writable control point, because if it isn't associated to a point, it has no value and therefore no image will be displayed. I will right-click on the Devices Points folder. I will then select New and select the numeric writable control point. I will rename my control point to Heating Valve. The point then appears under the Points folder. I will drag and drop the new point onto the graphics page. The Make Widget window is displayed. This is where I will select the actual coil image. I will select from Palette and then select the coil that I wish to add. I will add a vertical modulating coil. The image is then displayed on the graphics page. To set a value to my image, I will right-click on the control point and select Actions, and then Set. Here is where I will set a value to the image. In this case, I will put 100% heating. Notice how the glow of the coil intensified? That is because the coil image is an animated image, and therefore it changes accordingly to show that the coil is at 100% heating. I will move the coil image and place it onto my duck graphic. I can also add a bound label by dragging the point again on the graphics page. From the Make Widget window, I will select Bound Label. I will then move the label to any desired location, for example, just beneath the coil. We can reduce the heating by right-clicking on the bound label itself. To do so, I will toggle my view mode, right-click on the bound label, select Set, and enter 50%. The glow of the image has decreased to show that the heating intensity has also decreased to 50%. I will now return to the edit mode and I will add an extra component to my graphic. I will add a fan this time. I will right click on the points folder and select a boolean writable control point. I will rename this control point to fan status. I will drag and drop the control point onto the graphics page. In the Make Widget window, I will select from Palette and select the fan that I wish to add. The fan image appears on the graphics page. I will move it around and place it at the desired location. Now I will add a bound label to this image as well. Now that my label has been added, I will set a value to my fan. By setting the value to true, I will be activating the fan. By returning to the view mode, we can see that the fan has been turned on. You can play around with the bound labels by changing the settings to different values. For example, if I put this value back to 100, you will instantly see a change in the glow of the coil. In this case, the glow is more intense. You can also simply set the fan back to off. So by using the DC Images palette, you can create simple or even more complex system graphics simply by adding and assembling the graphic widgets as needed. Now let's move on to installing the DC GFX applications. 
The DCGFX applications is a complete set of pre-built devices with corresponding proxy points, logs, alarms, code, and ECNet AX graphic pages for display and configuration. You can simply drag and drop pre-engineered devices from the palette to your station and end up with a working device complete with code and graphics in just minutes. DCGFX applications also allows devices to be configured using configuration pages or to customize the code using ECGFX program. This will be explained more thoroughly in the next few minutes. Let's begin by installing the DCGFX applications graphic pages onto your ECBOS station directly from ECNet AX. To do so, we must go to the C drive. This is where we'll view the files that are on our PC. Then we will drill down to the Niagara, ECNet AX, the stick controls folders. This is where we'll find the DCGFX applications folder. Copy the folder, and then we will paste it in the files folder under the station. Locate your files folder and go ahead and paste the DCGFX applications. Now the DCGFX Applications folder with all files is now available under your station. If you are upgrading from a current version to a new version of the DCGFX Applications, this procedure will not overwrite the current version, but rather create another DCGFX Applications folder. This may take up excess memory on your ECBOS AX for nothing, so please make sure you delete any unwanted versions. Let me show you an example. Now that I have my DCGFX applications here, let's say this is the old version and now I want to install the new version. I will return to my file system, copy my DCGFX folder, and paste it back into my files folder. I will then end up with two versions. The latest one that I've installed, the system automatically assigns a different name to it. It adds a number at the end. So this is where it becomes important for you to delete any unnecessary versions in order to free up memory on your ECBOS AX. If you do delete the older version, for example this one, then make sure that you rename the other version to its proper name or else the system will not recognize it. Now we will move on to adding pre-engineered controllers to an ECNet AX station. But before adding pre-engineered controllers, you must determine whether you need a preloaded controller or pre-engineered application. The DC GFX Applications palette, shown here on the left, contains these pre-engineered controllers. The first part of the list consists of the pre-engineered controllers used with preloaded controllers. Simply drag and drop one of these devices from the palette to obtain a working device complete with code and graphics in minutes. The second part of the list consists of the pre-engineered controllers used with GFX applications that contain a complete library of pre-engineered sequences embedded within ECGFX program. The GFX applications are found in the code library of the ECGFX program and must be downloaded into the controller using the synchronized feature this will be shown later on in this tutorial. Now back to ECNet AX, where I will show you how to add a pre-engineered controller to an ECNet AX station. I will begin by opening the DCGFX Applications User Palette in ECNet AX. I will browse to the C drive, and then drill down to Niagara, ECNet AX, Distech Controls Files, DCGFX Applications, here you'll select the latest version of the DCGFX applications and then select the palette itself and click open. Now I will select their pre-required pre-engineered controller from the DCGFX applications palette. In my case I will use the ECB VAV. What I need to do now is to place the ECB VAV into the BCP BACnet driver. Select the device and drag and drop it into the BCP BACnet network driver. Now double click on the driver to display the BCP BACnet device manager and click discover. The discovered device will appear in the top part of the window. Select the device 
and then select the device that it needs to be matched to at the bottom section and then click match. Once the device has been matched and added to the station, double click on the device. A graphic overview of the VAV system that is now in place is displayed. This graphic view allows you to view live data as well as override or set certain configuration parameters. You can also select the configuration page here and define more parameters as needed. Earlier I mentioned that if you add a pre-engineered controller using a GFX application in the ECGFX program, then the application would need to be downloaded into the controller using the synchronized feature in ECGFX program in order to synchronize the application with the controller. Here is how it's done. Simply add a pre-engineered controller to the BCP BACnet network. In my case, I will select an ECB VAV single duct cooling. I will select it and drag and drop it onto the BCP BACnet network, just like I did earlier with my ECB VAV controller. Then I will discover my devices. Once all devices are discovered, I will match the ECB VAV with the ECB VAV single duct cooling. Then I will right click on the device and select Launch Wizard. This will start the ECGFX program. I will display the ECGFX program code library where we can see the pre-installed GFX applications. I will then expand the folder and locate the ECB VAV single duct cooling application. I will drag and drop the application onto the programming sheet. The application's sequence of operations is shown along with several other programming sheets in many different tabs. The pre-engineered applications have been designed to be as flexible as possible while allowing you to easily modify the program according to your own needs. So once the application is open, we can simply build and send the application to a controller. To do so, go ahead and click Synchronize. In the Project Synchronization window, select the basic synchronization options and click Next to continue. The ECGFX program will build the program and sends it to the controller. Once that's done, I will return to ECNet AX. And now I will create the control points for the pre-engineered application in the controller. I will right-click on my controller, select Actions, Create Points. Once my points are created, I will double-click on the controller to open the graphics page where you can view the device's live data. So this section of the tutorial has shown you how to add two types of pre-engineered controllers to an ECNet AX station. One is to add a pre-engineered device from a pallet to obtain a working device direct from the manufacturer complete with code and graphics, and the other is to add pre-engineered devices that contain a complete library of pre-engineered sequences embedded within the ECGFX program. This concludes our video tutorial on productivity enhancing tools. For further information, please refer to additional ECNet AX related video tutorials on our website.